We're hearing from the jury after the blockbuster verdict. The Theranos founder and former billionaire found guilty on four counts of fraud. Rebecca Jarvis is back with a look inside the deliberations. Good morning, Rebecca. Yes, George, and this was a long and dense trial. It went on for 17 weeks. The jurors had a huge amount of ground to cover. It was complicated, and now for the first time, we're getting an inside look at that deliberation room and why the jurors found Elizabeth Holmes guilty on four counts of criminal fraud. This morning, the first two Elizabeth Holmes jurors to speak out. Juror number six, Wayne Cotts. A 64-year-old TV writer and actor from Aptos, California, exclusively telling ABC News that three days into the deliberations, jurors had reached a decision on eight of the 11 counts against Elizabeth Holmes, but spent the remaining four days deadlocked on the three counts that were declared a mistrial. Juror number 11, Mike Q, a 60-year-old property manager from Santa Cruz, California, exclusively described the deliberation scene. We had to build an entire system to figure this out. We ended up using um, post-it sheets to put our notes on and pasting them to the courtroom wall. It covered an entire wall. It was our war room. The two jurors say they ranked witnesses' credibility using stars from one to four. A notable standout was former Theranos board member General James Mattis. It was four stars for the majority of the witnesses especially General Mattis, of course. General Mattis, four stars. And while Q says he found Holmes to be a credible witness, Cotts says Holmes ranked only two stars, the lowest the jury would go, as there were no one-star witnesses. We're all fine for you. you, did, you did great job. Ultimately, a few pieces of evidence stood out when it came to those four guilty counts, including the materials given to investors, as well as misleading financial statements and revenue projections. But on the not guilty patient counts, Cott says Holmes was one step removed from them and Q agrees. I don't believe the actions intended to hurt patients. That, that's, that's the one um, hurdle I could not get past on that. As for Holmes' allegation, she was abused by her former boyfriend and COO, Sonny Balwani, claims Balwani has denied. Cott says the jury felt sympathetic, but mostly just avoided the subject because they didn't think it was relevant to the charges. In the end, the two say the jury respected Elizabeth's belief in her technology, in her dream, and that even though it felt the guilty verdicts were just, it was still really hard to convict her, according to Cott's and Q agrees. I thought that she was genuine and I, I, I trusted her testimony, to be honest. Cots also told us while they'd listen to the witness testimony, they would often pinch themselves to stay awake. Things did get dense and complex at times in their downtime. They would do puzzles together. They ordered the same lunch, Cots told us, for many, many weeks. It was sandwiches, ham, turkey, and roast beef. He was a turkey and cheese guy. And George, he told us that the jurors famously got along together, that they were like a family at the end of the trial, George. You got a lot of details there. What more do we know about why Holmes was not convicted on the counts of defrauding patients, only on investors. Well, and as you just heard there from Q, he talked about the fact that it was hard for the jury to get past this hurdle of intent when it came to patients. When it came to the investors, however, George, Cots and Q both told us that they looked at Holmes as being in charge. She was running the show, and that is ultimately why they found her guilty of those four investor counts, George. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.